without wasting much time, the procession will be filing in very soon. When the procession is filing in, we will stand in reverence for the procession. Thank you very much. Greatest Funabite. Greatest of the greatest Funabite. Fabulous Funabite. Ah. Thank you very much. Let me reveal a brief about the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta. The university is situated on a vast 10,200 hectare campus and it stands as the beacon of agricultural and scientific excellence in Nigeria. The university was established on January 1, 1988 by the federal government of Nigeria with a tripod mandate of teaching, research, and extension services. The university has cut a niche for itself through its commitments to its motto, which is knowledge for development. The university prioritizes research and innovation as it is a hub for groundbreaking research in areas like food security, sustainable agriculture, climate change adaptation, and animal health. His research firms, dam, and laboratories serve as fertile ground for knowledge creation and practical application. FUNAB also provides a vibrant campus life that is beyond academics. It fosters a dynamic community spirit through the student union student clubs, sporting activities, and cultural events. The spacious campus, complete with sporting facilities, a well-stocked library, including an e-library, and comfortable hostels with well-pruned lawns, ensure a holistic learning experience. Ladies and gentlemen, can we put our hands together for the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta? Thank you. Our key achievement this year, early this year, to be precise, the university emerged as the best university of agriculture in Africa and seventh in the world by the Times Higher Education World University Rankings. The university also emerged 11th best value university for international students by study abroad A. In 2023, the university became 26th best in Africa, which by implication is second in Nigeria according to Times Higher Education Sub-Saharan Africa Ranking. Also by implication, it means the Federal University of Agriculture of Ekuta is the best public university in Nigeria. Dear distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
Let's put our hands together for the university once again. Thank you very much. Una integrated venture. Oh, Lura Bajigan. We will for a band of Mbobo Mutumua. If they hit the ball, they power will lose their twenty nine share for that venture. Jade, she tell me, give it to Labula Nikasoni. Funa Pamwa, Tabiti Funa Bread. Bread that Japonula Amara Doyo. Funa Vitamin A for food. Funa Cashew Nut. Epo Funa Bu. Yeru Pana. Tabiru. Inu Obete Bafise. Funa Chicken and Eggs. Funa Granite. Funa Student. Atamwa Lafetu Bombay. Funa Honey. Ati Be Be Lo. Ile Itura Ibalodi. Funa Guest House. Ni Alabata Ati Bara. Abe Okuta Na. You are a loo. Visit Funab Integrated Venture for all these and more. Side Public Relations Office, Funab Main Campus, Alabata, and all our retail shops at Camp Federal Housing, Alabata, and Ibarra. For inquiries, contact the director on 0812 789 1399. Funab Integrated Venture, the best for your daily needs. Good to see you, guests. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to recognize the presence of the Dean College of Environmental Resources Management, Professor Isaac Omoni. Can we put our hands together for him? Also, in our midst this afternoon, is the Deputy Registrar One, Senate and Admissions, Dr. Abisabo Salam. Can we put our hands together for him? Thank you very much, sir. As earlier said, today is the convocation lecture for the 34th convocation ceremony of this great citadel of planning. The convocation lecturer for today is Professor Yakubu Aboki Ochefu. 
He is the Secretary General of the Committee of Vice Chancellors of Nigeria and Universities. Also a Professor of African Economic History and Development Studies. A former Vice Chancellor of Kuala Rafa University, Taraba State. And also the President, University of Calaba Alumni Association. The title of his lecture for today is From Baby Boomers to Generation Alpha, Interrogating Generational Dynamics and Agricultural Education in Nigeria. Also, as earlier stated, the chairman of this occasion, of this convocation lecture, is His Royal Majesty Alaeluwa Oba Professor Saka Adiolama Temilola Olu Yalo Otile 37th, the Olowu of Owu Kingdom. Is also the 14th Olowu of Owu Kingdom. We will be presiding over this convocation lecture as chairman. Thank you. Also in our midst today is the director, Directorate of Physical Planning, Engineer Ken De Bamishile. Can we put our hands together for him? Thank you very much, sir. With her,
also like to recognize the presence of Mrs. Margaret Obishokwe. Also, can we put our hands together for her, please? I would also like to recognize the presence of um, Mr. Bolaji Balogun from the Registrar's Office. Can we put our hands together for him? Also in our midst is Mrs. Rachel Akin Shola. Can we also put our hands together for her? Thank you very much. This afternoon is the chairman of the non academic staff union, Comrade Samson Edifree. Can we put our hands together for him, please? Thank you. minutes the procession should be filing in before then let me quickly recognize um the hard work of the IC Trek staff ably led by their acting director Mr. Timitope Shorichure can we put our hands together for the IC Trek staff please also I would like to also Commend the efforts of the public relations team here present. Can we put our hands together for them, please? Public relations. Thank you. And the ceremonials committee. Can we please give them a resounding round of applause? They are the ones that put together this program. And we commend their efforts. Thank you very much. Also in our midst, just coming in, is the Director of Sports, Dr. Sam Olabanji. Can we put our hands together for him, please? In our midst this afternoon, the former student of this great study of learning who is going to be awarded by the vice chancellor today he is mr adebote olalekon olabisi can we give him a round of applause please can you please stand up for recognition thank you very much thank you
And we also put our hands together for the members of staff of the territories of sports. We welcome you all, please. As earlier stated, today is our 31st convocation lecture. And the lecturer for today is no other person than the Secretary General of the Committee of Vice Chancellors of, of Nigerian Universities, CBCNU, Professor. Yakubu Aboki Ochefu. He's a professor of African Economic History and Development Studies, the former Vice Chancellor of Colorado University, Taraba State, and also the president of the University of Calabar Alumni Association. The lecture is titled From Baby Boomers to Generation Alpha. Interrogating generational dynamics and agricultural education in Nigeria. The chairman for today is His Royal Majesty Alayelua of Oba, Professor Saka Adiolama Temilola Oluyalo Otile, that seventh. Who is this? 14th Olowu of Owu Kingdom. He will be pre presiding over the lecture as the chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, can we put our hands together for Professor Babatunde Idowu, the former vice chancellor of um, Glorious Vision University. You're welcome, sir. Less than two minutes, the procession will be piling in. We are all expected to rise. Immediately, the procession starts piling in. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, can we also put our hands together for one of our foremost um, professors who is retired but not retired, Professor Sam Otubusi. Can we put our hands together for him, please? And we all recognize the presence of our student union president, who is leading the executive, Comrade Meshak Unwako, popularly known as Mesh. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, God distinguished guests. We have in our presence this afternoon the Olowu of Owu Kingdom. Oba Alayelua, Professor Saka, Adiolama Temilola, Olu Yala, Otile 37. Dear distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we have in a means the chairman of this convocation lecture, who is no other person than His Royal Majesty, Alayelua, the Olowu of Owu Kingdom, 
Oba Professor Saka Ade Lola Matemi Lola Olu Yalo Otile the seventh. Can we all put our hands together for him? Kabiesio Kadekalori Kibata Pelase Esio Ko Aja Kok Esoba Aja Kokpao. With our KBSC this afternoon is Olori Aminat Adelaye Matemi Lola Matemi Lola KBSC As earlier stated, we are gathered here. We are gathered here for the 31st Convocation Lecture of a great university. And the lecture is to be delivered by no other person than Professor Yakubu Ojefu, who is currently the Secretary General of the Committee of Vice Chancellors of Nigerian Universities. He's a professor of African Economic History and Development Studies. A former vice chancellor of Kuala Rafa University, Taraba State. And also the president of Calaba, University of Calabar Alumni Association. The lecture to be delivered today is titled From Baby Boomers to Generation Alpha, Interrogating Generational Dynamics and Agricultural education in Nigeria. I mentioned there that in 2024, this university emerged the best university of agriculture in Africa. Can we put our hands together for that, please? And also, this university also emerged the seventh best university of agriculture in the world. Can we get a round of applause for that? This ranking was put together by Times Higher Education World University Ranking. Also this year, this university emerged 11th best value university for international students. This study abroad aid. Can we get a round of applause for that too? In 2023, Kuna became 26th best in Africa, which by implication means second in Nigeria and the best public university in Nigeria. Thank you very much. So we are expected to rise immediately the the process starts filing in. Can we all rise, please? The position is now filing in. Thank you very much. Can we all rise, please?
As earlier stated, we are gathered for the convocation lecture of our 31st convocation ceremony. The title of this lecture is From Baby Boomers to Generation Alpha, Interrogating Generation Natural Dynamics and Agricultural Education in Nigeria. To deliver the lecture is no other person than Professor Yakubu Ochefu, who is presently the Secretary General of the Committee of Vice Chancellors of Nigerian Universities. Professor Ochefu is a professor of African Economic History and Development Studies. He is a former Vice Chancellor of Guadalupe University, Taraba State and also currently the president, University of Calabar Alumni Association. The chairman of today's lecture is no other person than His Royal Majesty, Alaelua Oba Professor Saka Adelola Matemi Lola Olu Yalo Oti letter the seventh. He is the fourteenth Olowu of Owu Kingdom and is here with his Amebu Olori. Aminat Adelaye Matemi Lola. Can we put our hands together for them, please? Thank you very much. We presently in the best university of agriculture in Africa and also the seventh best university of agriculture in the world. Can we put our hands together for that, please? Yeah, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, you are all welcome to this great citadel of learning, the Federal University of Agriculture, Abiyakuta. And we are having today the Convocation Lecture. The lecture is to be delivered by no other person than Professor Yakubu Ochefu. He is currently the Secretary General of the Committee of Vice Chancellors of Nigerian Universities. He is also a Professor of African Economic History and Development Studies. Here are distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Professor Chefu is the former Vice Chancellor of Bararapa University, Taraba State, Nigeria. He is also currently the President, University of Calabar Alumni Association. Guests, we have um, the university orator in our midst, Professor Christian Ikobi, who is um, the immediate past deputy vice chancellor academic. Can we put our hands together for him, please? Thank you. We have um, coming on the procession the university librarian, Dr. Abayomi Owolabi, the acting bossa, Mr. Olukayo de Oshinoga, the acting registrar, Mr. Soluatoni Morufa Daudu. We have the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Development, Professor Kola Adebayo. We have also the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academy, Professor Lukayo de Akiemi. And then we have um, the Secretary General of the Committee of Vice Chancellors of Nigeria Universities, who is also the, the Convocation Lecturer for today, Professor Yakubu Ochefu. Can we put our hands together for him, please? Yeah, the senior you guests, ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem, please.
Thank you very much. As earlier stated, we are all gathered here for the convocation lecture of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abelkuta, around in the 31st convocation ceremony. Dear distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my greatest honor this afternoon to recognize the presence of the chairman of this great occasion, the Olowu of Owu Kingdom, Oba Professor Saka, Adelola Matemilola Olu Yalo Otileta the seventh. Ladies and gentlemen, can we put our hands together for the Olowu of Owu Kingdom? Kabesio. Kabesi is here with his amiable wife, the Olori. I mean not. Adeleye Matemilola. Can we give her a round of applause, please? Thank you very much. I would like to recognize the presence of the Vice Chancellor of the Best University of Agriculture, Abel Kuta. Best University of Agriculture, Abel Kuta. Best University of Agriculture in Africa. I beg your pardon. 
the Vice Chancellor of the seventh best university of agriculture in the whole wide world. Ladies and gentlemen, also my greatest honor to recognize the presence of Professor Olushola Babatunde Kendi. Thank you very much. It is, <laughs> it is interesting to note that the Vice Chancellor is a fellow of the Genetic Society of Nigeria, also a fellow of the Institute of Health and Safety, and also fellow of the Agricultural Society of Nigeria. Can we put our hands together, together for that, please? Thank you. In our midst this afternoon is Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic. Professor Olukayo de Akiyemi. Also, I would like to recognize the presence of the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Development, Professor Kola Adebayo. In our midst this afternoon is the Acting Registrar, Mrs. Oluwatoi Morufat Daudu. Also on the high table is the acting bossa, Mr. Olukayode Oshinoga. With us also is the university librarian, Dr. Abayomi Owulabi. Why we all are gathered here is because of the convocation lecture to deliver it to the Secretary General of the Committee of Vice Chancellors of Nigeria Universities, a professor of African Economic History and Development Studies, a former Vice Chancellor of Kwarapa University, Taraba State, and also the President, University of Calaba Alumni Association. Ladies and gentlemen, can we put our hands together for Professor Yakubu Aboki Ochefu? The title of today's lecture is From Baby Boomers to Generation Alpha. Emeritus Professor Olua Fumilayo Adebambo. Emeritus Professor Adebambo has a patent for FUNAB Alpha. Can we put our hands together for her once again? Also in our midst is Professor Sam Otubusi. Can we put our hands together for him also? Thank you very much. At this juncture, may I, may I respectfully 
invite the Vice Chancellor, Professor Lushalaba Batsude Kendi, to please give the Vice Chancellor's address. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. The Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Development, the Acting Registrar, the Acting Bursar, the University Librarian, His Royal Majesty, the Oluwu of Owu Kingdom, Oba Professor Sakama Temilola, who also happens to be my senior at Abiyukta Grammar School. You're welcome, KBC. KBC. The convocation lecturer of today, Professor Yakubu Ochefu. You're welcome, sir. The Olori of the Oluwu of Owo. Olori, you are welcome, man. The representatives of our Chancellor, the Obong of Calabar. You are welcome, His Royal Highnesses. Thank you, you are welcome. Um, distinguished guests, the Emeritus Professor, Professor Mrs. Ayoka Olufumilari Adebambo, Professor Sam Otsubushin, and the University Orator. Permit me to also greet the distinguished deans and directors here. Distinguished colleagues, I want to appreciate you. Please, a round of applause for our deans, our directors, our heads of departments, and our employers, because I must say that my employers are in there. I want to appreciate you. Please give me the honor to mention their names. Professor Folake Henshaw. Please, can you stand up for recognition? Professor Folake Henshaw is there. You are welcome, a member of the Governing Council. Professor Ade Oshun. Professor Ade Oshun, you are welcome. And of course, someone who is talked in there too, Professor J.J. Atungu. Professor Atungu, you are welcome. I know that Dr. Oduwale, Dr. O. Oduwale, are you around? You are welcome too. Those are the members of the University Governing Council representing the internal members. I also want to appreciate our staff, every senior staff, all the students here present. Mr. Comrade, Comrade Mr. Kinwako and his colleagues, you are welcome. Great Funabites! Great Funabites! It's okay like that. Let's, po let's postpone the rest. Or you want us to give it to them? Of the greatest book, book. Of the greatest Bagba. Of the greatest Higiaga. Kulu, Kulu. That's great. It is my great delight. It is my great delight to welcome you all to the convocation lecture of the 31st Convocation Ceremony of the University. This will be the second Convocation Ceremony held at the University since my assumption of office as the seventh substantive Vice-Chancellor of the Federal University of, Abeokuta, of Agriculture, Abeokuta, in April 2023. The 31st Convocation Ceremony of our University has been on for about a week now with series of activities commemorating the ceremony. We are gathered here today in furtherance of activities lined up for the 31st Convocation Ceremony. Convocation lectures during Convocation Ceremonies are traditionally organized to help in providing a platform not just to inspire the graduates, but also to help in shaping the values of the academic community in the continued march towards societal transformation through the entrenchment of the ethos of academic excellence, impact-based research, and a robust town and gown relationship. I'm therefore joyous that the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, has continued to demonstrate capacity in sustaining the academic tradition in terms of holding convocation lectures during convocation ceremonies. Let me seize this opportunity to reiterate the commitment of the current administration under my leadership in providing 
requisite skills and transformational knowledge, which will ensure that the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, remains in the forefront of providing education to our people with agriculture as its flagship program. We shall not rest on our oars in this march to building a 21st century university. The accolades and recognitions we are receiving shall serve as a springboard for us to keep running in pursuit of our vision. The convocation lecture of today, titled From Baby Boomers to Generation Alpha, Interrogating Generational Dynamics and Agricultural Education in Nigeria, provides an interesting discourse, not just to the graduates, but other stakeholders, especially as regards the infusion of modern trends in agricultural education. There could be no better person to speak to this topic than Professor Yakubu Ochefu, a distinguished academic of global repute and a prolific researcher. Also, perhaps no person is better qualified to chair this lecture than an eminent academic in his own right and a traditional ruler of eminence in Nigeria. Kabiese Oluwo of Owu, His Royal Majesty, Professor Saka Adelola Matemilola, PhD, Fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, Oluyalot Otileta the Seventh. His Royal Majesty has established in his person the real embodiment of what it takes when we talk about town and gown relationship. Kabiese while urging us to give the convocation lecturer our rapt attention as he dissects the issues, let me also use this opportunity to invite all of us for the grand finale of the 31st convocation ceremony tomorrow, January 27, 2024, which shall feature award of degrees ranging from bachelor's degree to PhD on our own graduates. Honorary degrees shall also be conferred on two distinguished Nigerians, Professor Atahiru Jega and Mr. Fola Adeola. I therefore urge us all to attend in making this ceremony a memorable one. Once again, on behalf of the Chancellor, His Royal Eminence, Edidem Eko Okun Abasi Otu V, on behalf of the management, the Senate, staff and students, I welcome you all to this convocation lecture. Thank you, and God bless you. Let's sustain our applause on the device until we get back to his seat. Thank you very much, sir. On this note, I have the privilege and honor to invite the Dean College of Plant Science and Crop Production, Professor Jonathan Atungu, to please take the citation of the chairman of the convocation lecture. Dear distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for Professor Jonathan Atungu. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Deputy Vice Chancellor Development, the Acting Registrar, the Acting Bossa, the University Librarian, His Royal Majesty, the Chairman of this occasion. The 31st Convocation Lecturer, Professor Yakubu Aboki Oshefu, the deans and directors, ladies and gentlemen. You can see that I'm new, and therefore I'm learning. It is an honor to me this afternoon 
to read the citation of the very important person in our midst this afternoon, who is the chairman of the convocation lecture. Indeed, it's a privilege, like I said, to be here to read the citation of somebody that I'm not worthy to do so. Is no other person as introduced earlier by the Vice Chancellor, but His Royal Majesty, Professor Saka Adelola Matemilola, a fellow of Nigerian Society of Engineers, the Oluya Law Otileta the Seventh. KBAC is the 14th Oluo of Owu Kingdom in Abeokuta here. Prior to his ascension to the throne as the Oluo, KBAC was an accomplished engineer, a scholar, and a philanthropist. He is an alumnus of the Premier University the University of Ibadan, where he had his first degree with first class in mechanical engineering. His quest for the academics made him to go back for his master's degree in the same University of Ibadan, where he got his MSc degree. He proceeded to Cambridge, the University of Cambridge, for his PhD in applied mecha mecha mechanics. And this made him a full career, a full career academic. He returned to this country to join the academic board and the industry. However, he started his career at the Ministry of Works and Transport in Ibadan, Oyo State. KBAC was a lecturer in his alma mater and a reservoir engineer at Mobile Nigeria Unlimited in Lagos. He was also a lecturer at Kinfad University of Petroleum and minerals that hand Saudi Arabia. After completion of his PhD, he worked as a research associate at Cambridge University before he moved to Southmount University in the UK as a senior research fellow. With this, he is a full-fledged academia. However, returned to Nigeria from UK to join the petroleum industry where he spent a very considerable part of his working career with Shell Development Company and subsequently with Force Exploration and Production Company. These are big companies in the oil industry. So KBAC contributed so immensely to these companies while he was out there. I want to inform this August audience that KBAC is an active academia having had the highest degree of PhD and worked in universities as lecturers, he anchored, he authored rather, over 30 technical publications. These 30 publications were very outstanding that were not only published locally, but the majority of the publications were offshore, i.e. KBC is an international academic. It is my privilege, again, to inform Mr. Vice Chancellor and this audience that KBAC was a visiting scholar at the Center of Excellence in Geosciences and Petroleum Engineering at the University of Benin, at the same time at the Institute of Petroleum Studies, University of Port Harcourt. 
He was a visiting associate professor at African University of Science and Technology, Abuja, and served also as adjunct faculty at the Department of Political Engineering, University of Ibadan. With this profile, I think it's worthy of note that KBAC is an erudite scholar and academic that has traveled far and wide and also distinguished himself in contribution to the society. Permit me to mention that he is a distinguished member of the Society of Petroleum Engineers and he serves on the board of trustees of that same society, but Nigerian Council. He is a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers and KBSC is an ardent believer of community-based social and economic development. When I was reading through this, I was tempted to relate with it our community-based farming scheme. And there I mentioned that uh, a short form of this is COP uh, DEC, as you have as COP first in this university. So KBC have contributed so very much to the development of this country in all realms of affairs. I'm glad at this point to inform this audience that KBAC has a lifetime dedication to improving the welfare of, the, of his people, especially now that he has taken on the role of a full-time public servant. He has initiated various major projects that are designed to raise the standards of education in his community. No doubt, KBC is a very outstanding, distinguished educationist. And I want to mention that his kingdom, as I know by the news that around the world, have produced several professors of repute, including emeritus professors. KBC has also been championing wide-ranging activities that have been providing and enhancing the technical and entrepreneurial skills of his people. He has also evolved projects to expand, deepen, and make primary healthcare services more effective in his community. This does not stand out alone, but in combination with areas of food security and food safety in his community. We thank KBC for this feat. As part of his desire to empower his people, he has been providing work equipment as well as microfinance facilities to small-scale businesses around his community and around the entire state and beyond. I'm happy to again mention why recognizing the Olori that KBC is happily married with very successful children. Join me this moment to welcome an outstanding his academic eminence, if I borrow a word from NUC at this point, somebody who has made so much fame in terms of the development of his people. I know that you know that Uwu Kingdom is one area, in spite of its landscape, that has so many beautiful roads across the community. I think I'm right. Yes, in spite of the landscape, you can drive there very easily and be happy that you can climb and go down without missing the road. KBC, thank you so much for this very um, important development. Let me welcome and introduce the chairman of this very important occasion, who will be sharing the convocation lecture, a king sharing an inaugural, I mean, convocation lecture to be delivered by a warlord, a warlord, Professor Yakubu Ochefu. Ochefu, by implication, is king of war. And by coincidence, the king is going to share a, a convocation lecture to be delivered by a king of war, Professor Ochefu. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The Vice Chancellor, my good brother, Professor Kanyade. We go back quite a while. The Deputy Vice Chancellors, our special guest speaker, Professor Ochefu. Thank you very much for being here. The BOSA Registrar, University Administrators. The Council of Chiefs of the um, Obong of Calabar, Your Highnesses, thank you very much for being here. The deans of our various faculties, health departments, and particularly the University uh, Governing Board, University Council. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our graduating students, I greet you all. It's a honor for me to be here today to chair this very important event of convocation lecture for the 31st convocation of this great university. The first, the best university of agriculture not according to the university or the friends of the university, but by uh, impartial assessors who have also ranked the university seventh best in the world. That's no mean feat. And I'm very happy that such an institution is right here in our own area. I feel very proud to be associated with this university. I wish university was around when I was looking for university to attend. Maybe I would have done part of my degree here in, in uh, FUNAP. I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of you. Thank you very much. You see, it's not just the university administrator, the vice chancellor, but also the lecturers and the students who have come together to make that great achievement possible. So, a crown of applause for all of yourself. The lecture for today, I think, is really apt. Dissecting, interrogating, analyzing the, from baby boomers to Generation Alpha. That is, from those born after the Second World War, say 1946, right up to the last couple of years. Things have changed a lot since then. From the days when we, we use hoe and cutlasses for agriculture, to today, when it has gone way beyond mechanization. And it's a very important thing for us to talk about particularly in the university that has been adjudged and acclaimed proudly so to be the best in agriculture in this part of our world. When you look at um, the trend of things, I have a young granddaughter. She's uh, three years old now. When she was a year and a half old, she would pick her mother's telephone and call me, call her grandmother. I still don't understand how she does it. A year and a half. So these are kids that were born in digital age. Now, the point of the lecture for me 
is how do we encourage such kids who are born in the age of technology, age of digitalization, to be interested in agriculture. When we talk about agriculture, without agriculture, we won't be here. It is, a, it is the basis and the foundation for development. No doubt about it. How do you tell somebody who is not properly fed to go and walk in a factory or to go and code uh, an app or to go and fight war? So on, so how do we encourage these young folks who are just heading into life now to be interested in training? Sex is also a discriminatory So it's really for discussion. Who are not, who do not have entrepreneurial skills? Because in this day and age when the labor market is saturated fully, you need to be able to create graduates who can create more jobs, not only employ themselves, but also employ others to help the re to reduce the overheated nature of the labor market, to help create more jobs to help to widen the opportunities for others. Of course, we will not all be entrepreneurs, but the more that we encourage and we train, the more entrepreneurs that we can have, the more jobs that are available, and the, the easier it gets for all of us. So that's why I say FUNAP is very well placed to lead the trend of the, uh, leading the young stars, especially Generation Alpha,
full speech. Ladies and gentlemen, dear distinguished guests, please let's put our hands together once again for KBC. On this note, we I respectfully invite the immediate past by Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, who is a university orator, Professor Christian Ikeobi, to please give the citation of the convocation lecturer. We are distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let's put our hands together for Professor Ikeobi. lecturer of today, Professor Yakubu Aboki Ochefu, to please stand and remain standing. Thank you, sir. Chairman, sir, with your kind permission, I present the citation on Professor Yakubu Aboki Ochefu, the convocation lecturer 31st Convocation Ceremony of the Federal University of Agriculture, Bekuta. Today, January 26, 2024. Professor Yakubu Aboki Ochefu is an academic, university administrator, and entrepreneur. He was born at the 44 Armed Forces Hospital in Kaduna, on Monday, the 24th of October, 1960, to the family of Cornell Anthony Aboki Ochefu, retired, of blessed memory, and Mrs. Mami Ochefu. His father, Cornell Anthony Ochefu, was the military governor of East Central State of Nigeria in 1975, and he served meritoriously of what is today constituting the Southeast geopolitical region, East Central State at the time. Professor Yakubu Aboki Ochefu started primary education at Army Children's School Dan Tunku Road, Kaduna, in 1964, and completed that at St. Benedict's Private School, Ibarra, Abekuta, in Ogun State, in 1971. He equally started his secondary education at Kufena College, Wusasa Zaria, in 1972, and completed same at St. Gregory's College of Balende, Lagos in 1977. After a one year stint at the School of Basic Studies, Ubokolo, he proceeded to the University of Calabar, Calabar in 1978 as the first set of Nigerian students to be admitted into Nigerian universities to the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAMB, in 1978, to study for a Bachelor of Arts Honors degree in history. He graduated in 1982 as the best student in his class and proceeded to serve the nation at the Government Day Secondary School in Funtua, Kasena State. In 1983, he enrolled to the postgraduate program of the Center for West African Studies at the University of Birmingham in the United Kingdom and graduated in 1985 with an MA degree in economic history and political economy. In the same year, he enrolled at his alma mater, Calabar, and registered as a part-time student for a PhD program in economic history, which he earned in 1992. Professor Yakubu Ochefu's academic career began as an assistant lecturer in 1985 
at the University of Calabar. He rose through the ranks and by 1992 was a lecturer grade one. In 1993, he joined the Benue State University, Makodi, as a pioneer staff, where he helped to establish the history department. In 2003, he was promoted to the rank of professor of economic history and development studies. At the Benue State University, he held various positions such as head Department of History, Dean Student Affairs, Deputy Vice Chancellor for two consecutive terms, Director of Consultancy Services, and Director of Open and Distance Learning. From 2012 to 2017, he served as the Vice Chancellor of Kwararafa University, Wokari Taraba State a privately promoted community-owned university. He was appointed Secretary General of the Association of Vice Chancellors of Nigerian Universities and Committee of Pro-Chancellors of Nigerian Federal Universities in November 2019. Professor Yakubu Aboki Ochefu has supervised over 60 received ever. Learning in Nigeria, Liberia, Ghana, and Uganda. He has also assisted many institutions
pleased to weld and sits on the board of a number of companies and non-governmental organizations. An active sportsman in his undergraduate and postgraduate days, Yakubu Aboki Ochefu was a member of the University of Calabar judo, cricket, basketball, and hockey teams. He is a Nuga 1982 silver medalist in judo, a certified judo coach, and a former chairman, Benues Amateur Judo Association. His other sporting interests are golf, handball, basketball, World Motor Rally Championships, and superbike racing. For general interest, he spends time researching and discussing disruptive technologies and creative processes, futurology studies, the African diaspora, creative funding for education, and infrastructure development using dynamic funding models, technology-driven governance reforms, and advanced technologies such as distribution. mimicry, bioinformatics, and their practical applications in higher education, agriculture, and public governance. Professor Yakubu Ochefu is a man driven by three passions. A passion for teaching and research in history, a passion for using technology to drive change, and a passion for development and world creation. He is a team-oriented individual and has excellent verbal and written communication skills, excellent teaching, mentoring and coaching skills, great cultural awareness from traveling, studying and living with people from around the world, good time and capacity management, gained from managing numerous large projects and constant tight deadlines. He is a widely traveled man who has visited over 33 countries in Africa, Europe, North America, and Asia, and has been to all the 36 states in Nigeria. He is married to his actrop, Hilda, Ihiwa Ochefu, and they are blessed with three adult children. He holds the traditional chieftaincy title of Ola Yala, bestowed on him by the Yala Kingdom of Cross River State in 2011 for meritorious services to the community. In his spare time, he enjoys reggae, heavy metal rock and roll, Sukus, Fuji, traditional opera, and drum beats, and classical music. He also enjoys skydiving, rainforest hiking, martial arts, and watching TV documentaries. Chairman, sir, this is the fourth convocation lecture that Professor Yakubu Aboki Ochefu will be delivering so far in the course of his career. The earlier convocation lectures delivered by him had the following titles. One, the nexus between the electoral process and good governance in Nigeria. Convocation lecture delivered at the University of Calabar, Calabar in 2016. Two, historicizing and prognosticating education and internal security challenges in Nigeria. Convocation lecture delivered at Prince Aldo Abubakar University, Anyeba, in 2022. And three, 
rethinking the philosophy of university education in Nigeria in the era of education 4.0, convocation lecture delivered at the Niger Delta University, Wilberforce Island in 2023. In the light of the foregoing, sir, and given his immense contributions to the Nigerian university system in terms of teaching, research, and publications, community engagement and development, university administration, and as Secretary General of the Committee of Vice Chancellors of Nigerian Universities, Professor Yakubu Aboki Ochefu is eminently qualified to deliver the convocation lecture of the 31st convocation ceremony of the Federal University of Agriculture, Bekuta, titled From Baby Boomers to Generation Alpha, Interrogating Generational Dynamics and Agricultural Education in Nigeria. With your kind permission, sir, I humbly invite Professor Yakubu Abukio Chefu to deliver the convocation lecture. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, Chairman, sir, Vice Chancellor and Principal Officers, distinguished members of the Senate and, and internal members of Council, at one point it was beginning to sound as if it was my obituary that was being read. Uh, University Orator. Next time I will not send my CV so that they won't expose all, my, all, the, all the things that I've done in the past. And when the Vice Chancellor asked me to come and deliver this lecture, uh, I was very hard pressed. Uh, notice was short and my schedule was crazy. But as you must have heard, read from the citation, um, Abekuta is my educational ancestral home. Um, if you had rendered the Egba National Anthem, I would have sung it from the bottom of my heart. Uh, and I remember those days we were actually at the convent, um, the Sacred Heart Convent in the boarding house. So when we talk about generational differences, when, when younger people hear that I was in boarding house in primary school, they are horrified. Because you can't imagine a six-year-old being put in boarding house. And so um, it's, it was coming back to Abeokuta is like coming back uh, home. And I thank the Vice Chancellor for doing me the honors. Uh, I must salute the Obong of Calabar that is also my ancestral home. I went to Calabar as an 18-year-old and uh, that is where I started life. I owned my first house uh, The, the lecture in two forms. I will read from my lecture and then there's a PowerPoint. Some very significant challenges uh, in, the, in, the, in the education system. Our leaders have had to confront uh, challenges brought by technology, social and political unrest, climate change, severe economic pressures in an environment often described as volatile, uncertain, complex, 
ambiguous and hyper-connected. Universities have had to ad adopt to these changes uh, because the technology that occasioned the Industrial Revolution fall from zero has disrupted many of our traditional ways of teaching, learning, and research. Uh, security challenges have also been there, and of course, we're all living witnesses to what uh, the havoc that the coronavirus wrecked on our systems. Uh, many of our leaders, university leaders, have had to struggle to keep pace with these challenges as the disruption is like whole scale. Now, but as valued social bodies, universities have a sacred and substantial role to play in time of crisis. So in this lecture, I invite you to cogitate on some aspects of the philosophy of university education in Nigeria in the era of education 4.0 with specific attention to education to agriculture. As you all well know, in the 76 year old history, the philosophy, this philosophy of education has evolved with three major growth stages. In the first stage from 1948 up to 1980, the primary concern was to build human capacity for a newly independent nation. From 1980, the emphasis shifted to investments in specialized human capacity. That was when we had the establishment of specialized universities, that of science and technology, that of agriculture like this one, and of course that of education. In the current stage that we are in, we cannot discern a clear thought path as a mismatch seems to exist between the various stakeholder interests and what the universities should or can do for the nation. Our current national developmental priorities and, traje and trajectories um, that is supposed to align with the nexus between university education and the knowledge economy and society is not quite there. The figures for higher education participation rates, which is the rate of the population eligible for university education versus the carrying capacity of its universities are a paltry 8.6% in Nigeria, while the global and African averages are 34% and 12% respectively. Our current governance and funding models need to reflect global best practice. Our reward and reporting systems can at best be described as outmoded, and our teaching, learning, and research systems are not student-centered and outcome-focused. While these are significant problems, they can equally become an opportunity if our current efforts to reform and transform university education is synchronized with the interest of two major stakeholders uh, in the education ecosystem, our current and future students, and our industry and community. I will focus on what appears to be a time gap in the nexus between what we do and the people and society we serve. I use agricultural education as an example to buttress my case and conclude that we need to rethink some elements of our educational philosophy. Doing so will enable us to engage better, will enable us to engage better the current generation of students we teach and those who will come our way in the next five years or less, and of course the society and industry that we serve. Uh, in terms of generational dynamics, we all know that our world is divided into generations. Uh, we have the so-called silent generation, that is the generation that, was, that prosecuted the, the world wars, who are today grandparents, great-grandparents. Then we have the baby boomers that are actually divided into two uh, into two categories. The first set of baby boomers who were born between 1946 and 1954, who are parents and grandparents today, and the second set of baby boomers, also known as the Generation Jones, who were born between 1955 and 1964, who are also parents and grandparents today. Then we have the Generation X, who are mature parents, 
the millennials or generation Y who are young parents and then the Gen Z, the so-called Zoomers who are young adults and the last set of generations are the generation Alpha. Now this above classification which was popularized by the United States Census Bureau and the Pew Research Foundation also has regional differences um, dependent on local historical circumstances. In Russia, for example, reference is made of the generation of the Cold War children and, and the generation of perestroika, that is those who were born after the Soviet Union was dissolved. In South Africa, people born after the 1994 election, general elections, um, the so-called um, uh, after apartheid, the first elections after apartheid are referred to as the born free generation, while those who were born after the year 20, 2000 were, are referred to the AMA 2000. Coming nearer home, we have Michael Ouagbemi's um, classification that refers to the generation that the, uh, the, the, the silent generation in Nigeria, he refers to them as the great independence generation, those that fought the colonial authorities and helped us to gain independence and inherited the Nigerian states. Then he has the wasted generation, which are the children of the silent generation, a term popularized by our own Wale Inka uh, as the generation that inherited the colonial state from the British. The missing and the lost generation are also there. Uh, that is our own generation. They were born right before or into independence and I joined the very best of a fledging nation. But he said something very interesting and I quote, this generation, too young to fight in the war, they however witnessed the bloody strife while enjoying the oil boom era. Disastrously, they watched as the Nigerian dream crumbled before their eyes as they came of age and entered the workforce in a bleak period of low economic and political independence. Largely disenfranchised, they were either activists, enablers, or absconders, courtesy of the brain drain as the sap austerity era drained Nigeria and destroyed security, health, and education system. This generation also was also the generation of crime, from armed robbery to cocaine pushing to internet credit card fosters. They learned leadership in the streets without the enabling environment. The digital, the digital democracy generation uh, are the children of this generation that he talks about. And it's a generation that is also described as the Renaissance generation, who are positive, hopeful, worldly, digital, and entrepreneurial. They are also global, extremely patriotic, and ambitious. One of their primary attributes is their significant numbers in diaspora, holding multiple citizenships, or residences due to the experience of their past parents uh, who are often uncles, aunties uh, that live abroad. Now we know that in most African countries, a generational cycle is 25 years. The age grade or set system was essential in virtually all African societies. Uh, in every generational cycle, three to four generations coexist while inter and intragenerational um, forces shape societal development. Also, every generation considers theirs as the best and has special attachment to life of that generation. We often refer to those good old days with nostalgia when remembering our youthful days uh, or our school days. Mirrored against the present, those days were much better than the present. Quality of education was better, even though we do not have computers and the internet. Travel was safe, even though it took a much longer time to move from point A to point B. Security was much better. There were few cases of armed robbery or terrorists. Entertainment was also much better. No DSTV or 24-hour television or MP3 music. So when we contextualize all that, we know that we look back with nostalgia to say, those good old days were better than now. Let us quickly explore how this generational preference plays out in the context of ed agricultural education. 
In terms of the generational dynamics and agricultural education, the landscape of agriculture, just like the chairman alluded to, um, is the bedrock of civilization. Each generation engages with the land with its unique values, experiences, and technologies. The silent generation, our, our grandparents, went to farm with hoes and cutlasses and carried all the load on their head or with bits of burden. When our own generation came to being, we saw tractors moving into the space, pickups, land rovers, and all manner of um, carriage, carrying, carrying products from the farm to the house was no longer on our heads. So the baby boomers, which is our own generation, my own generation, let me put it that way, um, the children of the silent generation those born between 1946 and 1964, you know, are the richest generation ever and laid the foundation for our modern society. They also laid the foundation for a technology-driven world and contemporary globalization. From the perspective of agriculture, this generation witnessed the transformation of agriculture. They were the generation that popularized the agriculture, the green revolutions um, and the other back to land revolutions that occurred. Many of them, because of the type of socialization that they engaged in, they were close to the land, close to their parents, and some of them actually farmed their way to school. And so they had that very strong connection with the land. But as time went on, especially by the 70s, given the challenges of harsh economic policies, harsh labor conditions, emerging environmental impact, many of them became disillusioned with the whole world of agriculture. The Generation X were very skeptical about agriculture. This generation gave expression to and massified the technology footprint of our own generation. They are the Niger generation, who made us proud in commerce, in sports, and in entertainment. They were the ones that built the new generation banks popularized the use of computers, created Nollywood, and reinvented Afrobeat. Gen Xers have been described as ones that approach agriculture with a serious dose of skepticism. They witnessed the excesses of industrial agriculture and environmental consequences, uh, leading them to rethink aspects of sustainability and environmental protection. Their education sought to balance between traditional methods and the new ecological approaches, paving the way for organic farming and agroforestry practice. The millennials are the digital natives who grew up in a world increasingly concerned about environmental issues and food security. They, they entered the agricultural scene armed with digital technology and a desire for social justice. Facing climate change and social injustice, they brought a renewed focus on sustainability and ethical food production. They are vocal advocates for ethical food production, fair trade practices, and animal welfare. Their education has a heavy dose of environmental science and food justice. And of course, it is this generation that is driving the use of digital tools um, in precision agriculture. Now, the millennials are also at the forefront of pushing for the rise of urban agriculture. Uh, but their idealism, as you all agree with me, often clashes with the realities of market forces and political constraints. The Generation Z and the Generation Alpha, who are emerging, we refer to them as the homo sapiens digitalis, who are born digital and carry the genes of three generations that still live with them. Very likely that grandfather, great-grandfather, and father will still be around to, to babysit this generation. They are very motivated, knowledgeable, and commonly operate in a virtual reality world. They have been described as the first generation that will set foot on Mars on planet Mars and laid the foundations for the 22nd century. Both Gen Z and the emerging generation Alpha represent a future 
where technology and environmental consciousness is second nature. These generations are more likely to be vegetarian or vegan, driven by concerns about animal welfare and climate change. Their relationship with agriculture is expected to be shaped by concerns about climate change, food justice, and animal welfare. They are tech savvy and open to exploring innovative solutions like AI and robotics driven precision agriculture, vertical farming, alternative protein production, and of course, they are also very big on mental health and wellness. Um, I'm sure you are all familiar with the fact that you'll see a 12 or 13 year old who will look at you and say, mommy, I'm stressed. And you are wondering, how can you at the age of 12 be talking about stress? No. Now, how do we bridge the gaps in terms of the educational, edu the, uh, um, agricultural education and these generational divides? Uh, how can we ensure that education equips the next generation with the skills and knowledge they need to thrive in a rapidly changing agricultural landscape? How can we bridge the educational, the generational gaps, fostering collaboration and knowledge transfer? How can we ensure that technology enhances rather than replaces traditional farming wisdom? Understanding these diverse generational perspectives is crucial for designing effective educational education programs. It is important for us to note that while intergenerational collaboration and knowledge transfer are key, the methodology must be different. Boomers can share the knowledge of traditional practice and rural life, but they will have to understand that millennials will leverage and embed it with their tech expertise and passion for sustainability. Gen Zs will always carry with them their social media savvy and advocacy skills to the table as the Generation Alpha will begin to pose questions about their concerns for the future. We must foster intergenerational dialogue and collaboration that enables us to create an agricultural education system that is inclusive, relevant, and equipped to address the challenges of the century. The new core curriculum and minimum academic standards programs in the agricultural discipline that we just approved by National University Commission uh, is, it has, it draws its goals and objectives from the National Policy on Education. At the core of that curriculum is the, is the effort to restructure the sector to enhance capacity in terms of production of food for rapidly increasing populations the supply of raw materials for the growing industrial sector and the rise in GDP. Um, it also seeks to employ thousands of Nigerians and, and engage and, and enable us to get foreign, ex, foreign exchange. The philosophy and mission, mission statement underlying the programs are aimed at a renewed commitment for fuel security and general self-reliance by producing graduates that are adequately equipped with the comprehensive theoretical knowledge and practical skills required for meaningful engagement in agriculture and related fields. Noble as these intentions are, the academic programs that are to drive them does not seem to have taken into consideration the trajectory of societal development along the generational lines that we have discussed. So the degree programs available for Gen Alpha in the CC mass include BSc agribusiness, agri agricultural economics, extension, animal and crop science, family and consumer science, fisheries and aquaculture, food science and technology, forest resources and wildlife management, horticulture and landscape management, and of course, water resources management and agrometeorology and soil science. Some of the new degree programs that are revolutionizing agriculture in other parts of the world and address and agricultural practices that address the interest of the broader operating environment and the emerging generations are not captured in this new curriculum. Courses like BSc program in agricultural systems engineering agricultural leadership, education, and communication, 
poultry science, uh, freshwater science, horticulture and urban agriculture, digital agriculture, organic and smart agriculture, post-harvest agriculture, the uh, bioproduction bio science, agro-industrial engineering, herbal production technology, culinology and culinology, viticulture and enology, and bakery science are not available. 40 years ago, some of these courses did not even exist, or at best were postgraduate specializations. They are, high, they are now, however, full-fledged academic disciplines at the undergraduate level being studied in some universities in Africa, I must say. Beyond the programs, how well have we fared in our adoption of new learning styles and technologies in agricultural education? To what extent are we deploying interactive online platforms, virtual reality simulations, and gamification to make agricultural concepts more engaging and accessible for younger generations? Are we using artificial intelligence-driven learning analytics models to monitor our students' learning outcomes? To what extent are our local institutional repositories visible to global ones? Are the works of our researchers and authors visible on trusted indexing services like data sites, ORCIDs, and Crossref? Does FUNAB have visibility in the registry of research data repositories like uh, Retree data or access to the IGSM platform that preserves knowledge? These are fundamental questions that we need to ask ourselves because this is the direction in which education is uh, 4.0 is going. The fourth industrial revolution and agriculture is something that we need to take more seriously because agriculture, like we have said, is the backbone of civilization. But the digital transformation that has disrupted other industries, including education, is not sparing agriculture either. We now see driverless operated tractors to drones and algorithms for educational agricultural data. Digital agriculture is the new successor to the third agricultural revolution, or what is commonly referred to as smart or precision agriculture. A new breed of agrarian worker has emerged, one powered by algorithms and fueled by data-driven artificial intelligence that is rapidly transforming how we grow and manage food, sow seeds, and feed livestock. AI power tools. And weather data to determine the precise amount of water needed for each crop, minimizing water waste and improving irrigation efficiency. It can also be used to reduce pesticides. So, is such a conversation going on at the level of our dear university? The future of agriculture is not about replacing farmers with robots. It's about creating a powerful partnership between human ingenuity and AI-powered tools 
by harnessing the power of AI, farmers can become data-driven decision makers, environmental stewards, innovators, ensuring a bountiful and sustainable future for generations to come. Where are we with such conversations? Let me conclude, Mr. Chairman, with a quote from the famous African scholar, Franz Fanon, who stated that each generation must discover its mission, fulfill it, or betray it. Each generation brings unique strengths and challenges to humanity in general and the field of agriculture in particular. We run a generational relay race that encompasses bridging the gap with, with what is traditional, consisting mainly of the past, what is existing, and contemporary knowledge, and we prognosticate future Agricultural education Placing the SMAC, which is the social, mobile, analytics, and cloud technologies that are on their way out. In the next five years, this will be the core technology. The DRQ market is already a market that is worth over $650 million as of 2019, and rising at a compounded annual growth rate of 5% between 2020 and 2025. Nigerian universities must play a role in this emerging technology threshold and develop a strong talent pool that will drive teaching, research, innovation, and adoption of DARQ solutions for the country. The second example 
is the review of our approach to entrepreneurship programs and innovation and, in, uh, and innovation studios to encompass low cost but high value activities such as vermiculture, ceramics, bamboo and exotic grasses, software and electronics design, 3D printing and CNC rapid prototyping and recycling. The global market opportunity for ceramics is 165 billion US dollars compounded to grow at an annual rate of 3.7%. Insect-based animal protein is currently valued at $20.6 billion. In terms of market revenue, the African edible insect market, uh, uh, protein market was worth 200 million as at 2022, and is estimated to reach $3.5 billion in 20, by 2032. Black soldier fly farming, alone will account for about 40% of this amount. These represent enormous opportunities for us. And the third example of where it's going to come from is providing the framework for our universities to view data as an economic resource. We sit on tons and tons of data and we do not know that there are opportunities uh, that can, opportunities and rewards for collecting, analyzing and monetizing digital data in our institutions of higher learning. The World Innovation Summit, at the World Innovation Summit Education in Doha, Qatar, the Vice Chancellor of Oxford University, the then Vice Chancellor, Professor Andrew Hamilton, to, ca to calm free nerves over the perceived threats by the then emerging MOOCs in global higher education, noted that the university system that we run is a very resilient one is over a thousand years old. As disruptive as some of the aspects of Education 4.0 is, they complement our age-old traditional functions and obligations to teach advanced knowledge and advanced knowledge through research. The role of higher education in the social, cultural, and economic development in Nigeria will continue to include maintenance, uh, to maintain adherence and loyalty to world education academic standards to ensure that the unification of Nigeria and Africa, to encourage elucidation and appreciation for Nigerian and African culture and heritage, to develop human resources for our community, to train humans, to train Nigerians for nation building and continue to evolve a genuinely African pattern of higher education dedicated to Africa and its people, yet promoting a bond of kinship to the larger society. As academic leaders, we must continue. We must continue encouraging and pushing our political leaders to improve investments in our education. We must continue to develop innovative curricula that are polymath and problem solving based and relevant to the current and future needs of the labor market and the promotion of research and scholarship. The provision of scholarships and other forms of financial assistance to staff and students must take a front burner such that no student is denied a university education on account of lack of funds. We must challenge ourselves to constructively disrupt the current scheme of things if we are to reorientate and reposition our universities to take advantage, to take a leading role in the fourth industrial revolution and knowledge-driven Nigeria. We must put on the table creative ideas like the use of blended financing to fund education, differentiated unit cost and dynamic pricing of fees, alumni-based and driven business models, universities as business ecosystems, educational infrastructure as a service, device as a service, and dual compensation modes for university workers. We must demonstrate a deep and clear understanding of VUCA H and VUCA 2.0 principles, that is vision, understanding, courage, and adaptability. An understanding of this, of new ways of managing and meeting stakeholder expectations, creative and innovative thinking, and risk management must stack high in our operational repertoire. Our institutions must also go beyond the triple helix model of university-industry government relationship to include the public, the quadruple, 
and the environment the quintuple interconnections within our knowledge economy. The quadruple helix model incorporates the public via the concept of a media-rich, media-based democracy, while emphasizing that when the political system is developing innovation policy to develop the economy, it must adequately, uh, we must adequately communicate its innovative policies with the public and civil society via the media to obtain public support for these new strategies and policies. The major stakeholders in our educational ecosystem, such as the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Finance, National Planning, uh, NUC, JAM, TED Fund, Committee of Co-Chancellors and Vice-Chancellors, the various academic and non-academic unions, alumni associations, parents, students, members of the host community, and of course, uh, members of the host school community where the universities are located, and of course, industry and other actors that employ our products must share to a large extent the vision of a productive university system that works for all. Simply put, we must align the purpose, people, and performance. By so doing, we can conclude on a university education development agenda for the coming generation of students and their teachers to receive, consider, and implement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am done. Thank you very much. You will all agree with me that um, Professor Jefu has done justice to the lecture. Dear distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, can we please give a resounding applause to the convocation lecturer. Thank you very much. At this juncture, May I respectfully invite the Vice Chancellor, Professor Lushola Babatude Kende, to please present the convocation lecturer with university memorabilia. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, distinguished guests, you will agree with me that this has been a very thought provoking lecture. And once again, we want to appreciate our convocation lecturer, the 31st convocation lecturer, Professor Yakubu Aboki Ochefu. Thank you so very much, sir. On behalf of the Senate, staff, and students of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, I present this award of honor to Professor Yakubu Ochefu who is the 31st Convocation Lecturer, dated this day, Friday, 26th January, 2024. Congratulations and thank you very much, sir. In addition, sir, on behalf of our university, we also want to present you this one, sir. Thank you so very much. God bless you for coming. We appreciate you. Thank you very much, sir. Can we give the Vice Chancellor a round of applause once again? Thank you, sir. At this moment, 
There is an award D for today. That the Vice Chancellor will be presenting an award to a former student of this great citadel of learning. And to read the awardee's um, citation is the Director of Sports, Dr. Samuel Olatejola Banji, a fellow Chartered Institute of Public Management, FCPM. Can we give him a round of applause, please? Thanks, sir. The convocation chairman, KBAC, the vice chancellor of our great university, Professor Obi Koinde, the deputy vice chancellor academic, Professor Odi Akinyemi, the acting registrar of the university, Prof, uh, Mrs. Daudu, the acting bossa, the university librarian. I want to specially recognize the convocation lecturer who doubles as a coach. He has performed wonderfully in our field. He has excelled. I give it to you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Distinguished academic, great Nigerian students, my colleagues in the directorate, and Tim Funa, where are you? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the first time in the history of our great university, Federal University of Agri Kabekuta, when a vice chancellor will identify with the sports community of this university. We have had a lot of sponsors, but in the magnanimity of the vice chancellor, he has chosen to identify with the special awardee of today. I say thank you, sir, for this recognition. The profile of Mr. Adebote or Laleko or Labisi. A sports philanthropist. Mr. Adebote Olalekan Olabisi was born on July 2nd, 1994. He hailed from Odogolu, Ogo State. Mr. Adebote graduated from Federal University of Agri Kabekuta in the Animal Nutrition Department, Kolani. He equally bagged Master of Science degree in Management from University of South Wales, Tresfors, Cadvis, Wales, United Kingdom. Mr. Debote has processed a World Athletics second level certificate in coaching and field events. As a practicing agriculturist, he also boasts as one of the best agricultural farms in Ogun State. He is a digital fund trader and a resolute problem solver. As a lover of sports, Mr. Debote has an Antics United States Sprint and Jumps Coaching Certificate. 
He is also currently the chairman Athletics Coaches Association of Nigeria, Ogun State Chapter. Philanthropical activities. As far as Federal University of Agri is concerned, Mr. Debote volunteered to sustain the athletics team after the demise of the then coach of this university that we all know as Ogojo Council, late Victor Olumuiwa or Sotolu, who served the university until his demise between 1991 and 2016. He has given scholarship to FUNAP students to the tune of five million per year. Per year. These activities he has been doing in the last seven years. Mr. Debote has provided sport kits, shoes, spikes, and supplements for all our FUNAB athletics team. He has purchased, he has purchased and named a sports boss called the Victors. A black colored bus, when you see it, is the product which he provided to support the university athletics team. All this was done in memory of late coach Victor Olumiwa Osuntolu, a chief coach in this university. He also projected FUNAB athletics team tag the Victors. And currently, affiliated FUNAB athletics team to the Nigerian Federation as a club based in FUNAB. This is a real privilege for a university. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. It will interest you that he constructed a training pitch called Long Jump for students' use in FUNAB, which is currently at the University Sports Center. He has also set up a training gym, which worth over 20 million for student athletes' use in FUNAB, currently in Sports Center. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Mr. Debote, has assisted FUNAB Athletics under his training program to represent Nigeria in under 20 and senior categories and has produced the highest number of medals to the university in the last 26 Nuga Games held at the University of Lagos, Akoka. Team FUNAB. Mr. Deposte sponsored 15 of our students to World University Games Trials FISU held in the University of Benin in last year trial edition and has equally produced two of our athletes to represent Nigeria at the World University Games Chengdu, China last year August to September 2023. To capital, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, Mr. Deporte gave a check of 500,000 Naira to support the widow of late coach Victor Olumiwa of Usolu in 2023, last year. He has helped and supported many of our sports athletes and the Directorate Sports Center at large. On this note, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, above 
contributions and achievements I present to Mr. Vice Chancellor, Mr. Adebote, Ola Lekon, Ola Bisi, to receive the Vice Chancellor Special Award on this 31st convocation ceremony. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please, let's have our seats. Let's have our seat. Actually, please, let's have some quiet there. Let's have some quiet at the band set. Like the director of sports said, we have decided to single out this gentleman to appreciate him for what he has been doing for the sports directorate of our university. You finish from here, yes. But it will interest you to also note that last year, was it last year or 2022, we went to Nuga, Nigerian University Games, and out of 76, out of 125 universities in Nigeria, we came 11th overall. We came 11th. And for that, we want to owe it to a large extent to the activities and support of this gentleman. Ditto, when we came 11th, Nuga was very happy and we were invited to come for the preparatory stage at University of Benin. At that point, you know, as a university, we were just getting out of the woods financially because of the long strike. But we told them at the sports directorate, we won't have opportunity to send you there, especially labors, provision. He said, whatever you have, bring. Don't worry. I was, he was not just only supporting financially, he was there physically with them, sharing them, doing all those things. And at that event, two of our athletes qualified to go for the World University Games in Chengdu, China for last year. And also, of course, when that happened, the challenge us as a university. We said, okay, as far as we could go, we will sponsor these two athletes to China. And we did. But then, it was also there to cheer them on, to give all the support. If you get to our sports center today, we have a gym. We have a gym there. And while I was saying that we should encourage our staff to go to the gym. I was actually trying to boast and say, yes, we have a gym. And he reminded me that, sir, all the equipment in that gym, they were bought by this man over the years. And so, it just felt that while we acknowledge what our alumni, what they have been doing in this university, of course, I use this opportunity to also appreciate the Alumni um, Association. Every year, the alumni in the US, they give um, scholarship worth about seven million naira every year to indigent students. Whenever exams are coming, the alumni will buy foodstuffs and support to indigent students in the university. So we appreciate every of those. The university library was painted last year by three of our alumni members, fully, completely. And so, in that regard, I've said that we are going to publicly acknowledge the support of Mr. Olalekon Adebote. Well, what we can say is that silver and gold we do not have. But what we have is to appreciate you to honor you at this occasion and to say that we actually appreciate and acknowledge all the support that you have been giving us. And we pray that the Lord will continue to bless you. Once again, congratulations. Thank you so very much. So, we just want to showcase this a plaque will be presented to me at another opportune time. Back to be presented, but at least this just to let him know that his activity 
those in support are not going unrecognized. Mr. Lali Mahdebote, thank you so very much. Also, I've just been told that in furtherance of that appreciation, the Olu of Olu Kinga, Papa Professor Saka, Martin Lola, would like to take a picture with him. Kabisio, Kabisio. Thank you very much. Can we give a resounding round of applause once again? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. At this juncture, the program, we are drawing the curtains for the 31st Convocation Lecture. And on this note, I would like to invite once again the Vice Chancellor of our Great Citadel of Learning to give the closing remarks. Professor Olushola Babatude Kende, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as we come to the closing of this ceremony, please permit me to once again appreciate all the dignitaries that have joined us at this occasion. We cannot but continue to appreciate our royal father, his royal highness, his royal majesty, Oba Professor Saka Adilolama Temilola Uluyalo Tileta the seventh. Kabiesio Kabiesio Anulori Aminot Adele Yema Temilola Ulori. Thank you so much, man. You're welcome. We also appreciate the representative, so to say, of the Chancellor of our university, the Obong of Calabar, the High Chiefs, the Royal Chiefs that are here, His Royal Highness, Etienne Ekpo Achibong, the Secretary of the Council. You are welcome, sir. His Royal Highness, Chief Edembasi, the Duke. Otuen Young Dr. Anthony Effiom. You are welcome, sir. We also want to appreciate Emeritus Professor Lufumilayo Adibambo. Dito, we appreciate especially Professor Samuel Utubushin. Thank you, sir. And then, um, please, distinguished guests, before we leave, permit me to welcome specially also FUNI students, our students from the Federal University of Agriculture Abekuta School, Secondary School, FUNIS. Funab International School, please stand up for recognition. Thank you very much. We hope that very soon, 
you will join this ones. Please have your seats. We also want to welcome students from the FUNAP Staff School. FUNAP Staff School students, please stand up for recognition. Thank you very much. And finally, I have also a special recognition to make. And that special recognition, I ask that this particular person join us at this occasion. You know, I mentioned the fact that a lot of our alumni, they are really contributing their quota towards the development of our university. And one alumnus that I would like to specially mention at this ceremony is Lieutenant Commander Victor Agumbiade of the US Navy. Can you please stand up for recognition? Where is he? I think he's around. Left, oh, it's at the back there. Lieutenant Commander Victor Agumbiade is in the US Navy. He has been here several times. Many of the projects that are being done by the alumni, they have the backing of Lieutenant Commander Victor Agumbiade. Once again, we welcome you, great alumnus. We thank you for all that you have been doing. God bless you. God bless you. And so, we come to the end of the convocation lecture of the 31st convocation ceremony. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we want to appreciate you. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much, sir. Let's give the vice chancellor a better applause, please. Can we give him a resounding applause, please? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Lieutenant Commander Victor Kumbia, the device of the wants to have a handshake with you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. At this juncture, we have come to the end of the event. The announcement, the procession, we move in the reverse order through, through the exit A at my right and the students should please remain in the hall. Ladies and gentlemen, dear distinguished guests, chairman, can we all rise for the anthems please? Thank you, sir. Funab anthem followed by the national prayer. Thank you, sir.
second stanza of the national anthem. Very much. Let us be. Let us all remain standing until the procession takes its leave through the exit A in a reverse order. We've come to the end of the thirty-first convocation lecture that was delivered by the Secretary General of the Committee of Vice Chancellors of Nigerian Universities. A professor of African Economic History and Development Studies and a former Vice Chancellor of the Kuala University, Tararaba State. He is also the President, University of Calaba Alumni Association. The title of the lecture was From Baby Boomers to Generation Alpha Interrogating Generational Dynamics and Agricultural Education in Nigeria. Thank you very much, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, for honoring our invitation to the 31st Convocation Lecture. Tomorrow, we'll be having the grand finale at 10 a.m. We expect our dignitaries to be seated by 9.30 a.m. Thank you very much. Ready a Japonu la Amara do yo yo. Funa vitamin A fufu. Funa cashew nut. Epo funa bu. Kiru pana. Tabiru ninu obete ba fise. Funa chicken and egg. Funa integrated venture. Wo lura baji gan. Ben wi fara bande fun bobo mutumuwa. Ijayi ti gbo. Nipa awon eroja ton ti le se funa venture jade.